I am here with Paul Lazenby. He is the Canadian super heavyweight Muay Thai champion. And uh, he's in studio with us, but there's a whole bunch of other things he is as well. And I told him if he doesn't, if he's not good here, I might have to pull a few of my kung fu moves on him. And I don't want none of that at all. <laughs> I get my butt kicked on TV, my reputation's out the window. Oh, come on, it's good for me though. <sighs> okay. okay. Uh, let's just talk about the fights that you do. Uh, we've got Muay Thai, that's the, that rec the most recent one you did. What exactly is Muay Thai? Uh, um, Muay very old style of fighting, uh, thousands of years old, that originated as a form of battlefield combat in Thailand. Uh, right now it's contested under rules that allow the fighters to punch, kick, strike with their elbows, strike with their knees, and also perform standing throws. Okay, let's take a look. We actually have a clip of, uh, of your last fight. I think that was, um, you can explain who, uh, who you fought in the, uh, that was for the championship. Here we go. Yeah, this is September 2000. This was my fight for the Canadian Muay Thai nice. Championship. Nice. Okay, September 2000. Yeah, that was Rick Lusser from uh, Ontario. I didn't see him before the fight, actually. He was a monster. He was about 6'8 and look. 270 pounds. He was huge. Oh I, I was a bit God. heavy at the time myself. Look. But uh, this is in the fourth round. Uh, he beat me up pretty badly in the first three rounds, and I finally managed to tire him out. So he's, he's kind of flagging right here. You are not relentless. Wow. Okay, so let's talk about the danger of uh, Muay Thai. Uh, is, what are some of the, um, you know, the, the dangers involved or the injuries that can take place? Well, obviously, any form of traumatic injury from, from combat sports, uh, blows to the head, uh, strikes to the legs. It's routine for Muay Thai fighters not to be able to walk properly for several weeks mm. after a fight. Uh, that fight, uh, the clip from the fight we just watched, I couldn't walk properly for three weeks. <laughs> Why do you go back? <laughs> <laughs> well, I always like to say fighting's not a decision, it's a compulsion. Okay. <laughs> um, anytime I have to answer that question, I always like to quote a, a theory by a Nobel laureate by the name of Conrad Lorenz. He stated that he thought aggressive impulses built up in everyone. And they would eventually get to the point where if you didn't give vent to them voluntarily, they would be vented spontaneously. And you see support for this theory every time you pick up the paper in cases of road rage or spousal abuse or some wacko taking a rifle to work. So with that in mind, I think fighters are very self-aware people because even if we don't know why we're more aggressive than most, we acknowledge that and we find a constructive, controlled environment in which to vent our aggression. Wow. So there's a, there's a purpose for it. And then so let's just move on to, okay, so we can actually, uh, we're going to roll a little bit more tape and, and keep talking here. Uh, we've got, uh, this is Aaron Weiss. Weiss, yes. Weiss. He's from the Fairtex Muay Thai Academy, which is the best Muay okay. Thai school in North America. Look at you, easy. Do you ever just say, okay, he's t I'm hitting him way too much? Oh, no, actually, <laughs> I felt like throwing up my hands because he was so tough. He took five rounds of this. I, I deliberately went to Chris Franco at the Studio West Martial Arts Academy because he's the best trainer in town. Chris really got me ready for this fight. I was really, really ultra conditioned. But uh, Aaron was just mega tough. He took me right to the very end of the fight and kept fighting me all the way. I wow. did win by unanimous decision, but I got to give him his props. He was a tough guy. Tough guy. So how do you train for this, uh, this fighting? Uh, it's pretty exhaustive. Uh, uh, basically, a lot of pad work, a lot of sparring. It all depends on your trainer. Uh, as I've said, training with Chris, he's very intelligent about the way he trains me, when I have to rest and when I should be busting my butt in the gym. Okay. Uh, a lot of work on the bag. Uh, sparring is very, very important, though. Nothing can replace sparring. You have to have somebody coming at you and, and throwing you for a loop. Uh, I've gone to people like Ernie Jackson, former uh, Canadian kickboxing champion, Chris Franco himself, and uh, that way you know, I go to every, every good fighter I can get in the ring with me. And mm. that way I know that uh, I won't have any surprises in the ring. Okay, when did you decide you wanted to, uh, to fight? It actually kind of, I, I kind of backed into it. I was a professional wrestler initially, <laughs> and I got a chance to go to Japan and fight in an ultimate fighting circuit called Pancray. So I lied and told them I was an experienced fighter. <gasps> and uh, got dropped in. My first fight ever was in front of 10,000 people in Tokyo. And uh, I, I loved it. Uh, they loved the way I fought, too. I didn't win, but they liked my fighting spirit. They liked the fact that I attacked from the opening bell. So they invited me to stay in Japan and train at the school, and uh, I started as an ultimate fighter. Oh, wow. So professional wrestler as well. Tell me about your days as a professional wrestler. I started that in 1991. I was trained by Chris Jericho and Lance Storm off the WWF. And, uh, that took me all over the world. I got to go to Africa, I got to go to England and uh, participate in wrestling circuits there. Um, my favorite place, kind of weird, but my favorite place out of all those places was Detroit though. I think <laughs> we have a clip of that. There's a place called Insane Championship Wrestling. Uh, I had long hair then, I was <laughs> wrestling as the Death Wolf. And uh, so I had that, a lot of fun there. This, so, so that's you there with the long that's hair? That's me with the long hair, yeah. Is that real hair? That is real hair. Wow. Yeah, that, that kind of got in the way. This is right before I started <laughs> Ultimate Fighting and uh, it was kind of a pain in the butt when I was doing Ultimate. But I had a lot of fun. This was actually in the building where uh, Kid Rock and the Insane Clown Posse got their starts as music groups. Oh. Uh, Insane Championship Wrestling also used to uh, 
do run shows out of the same building. Wow. Yeah, it was. I had, I had a great deal of fun doing that. Can but, you uh, compare this to the Ultimate Fighting? Because this looks like there's no hold bars as well. I mean, it's I actually it's the most injurious thing I've done. Okay. Uh, pro wrestlers sustain a uh, greater quantity of injuries and more severe injuries, I think, than any other combat participant at all. Even though it is, I mean, it's common knowledge now that it's contrived. Really? Uh, <laughs> what a shock. <laughs> Um, I didn't know. <laughs> it's uh, a lot of people like to use the word fake. I don't like to use that because okay. uh, there's more impact damage sustained by a professional wrestler than by any other kind of combat athlete. Actually, when I started doing Ultimate Fighting, I found it refreshing when somebody took me to the ground. I wasn't whacking into the canvas all the time. So there are serious injuries to be sustained by any kind of combat sport, but I just found pro wrestling to be off the scale as far as injuries. Okay. Uh, and what are the benefits that you're feeling um, through, through the fighting? Like, what are you gaining uh, personally? As obviously, physically, you're in shape, but uh, what are the kind of benefits that you... Uh... It's calmed me down. Um, as I've said, you know, fighters are just naturally more aggressive people. They wouldn't be fighters. And if you're getting it out of your system in training, you're getting it out of your system in the ring, you've got nothing to prove in the street. You know, one of those guys who's walking <laughs> around with the invisible lats, bumping people in bars, trying to look tough. Yeah. I don't want a street fight. I want a nice cushy ring. I want one opponent. I want a referee. Um, I'm, I'm really, really happy with myself. I can look back on my accomplishments and say, you know, I, I looked that guy in the eyes, he knew I was coming, and I beat him. I didn't hit him in the back of the head with a bottle in a bar and try to feel like a tough guy that way. Mm. So okay. it's, uh, it has definitely has given vent to my aggressive impulses and given me a sense of accomplishment. I, I want to know, no holds barred, what exactly does that mean? Uh, well, technically it means no rules fighting, but there are no organizations that I know of right now, aside from underground ones, that sanction no rules fighting. The Ultimate Fighting Championship has a rule book several pages long now, as did Pancrase, the group I fought with. Was it's also also known as mixed martial arts now. Okay. Now, was there there was a, a change recently? I think uh, that I was told that happened that um, made it so that people you couldn't actually you know fight till someone um, is is killed. But there's things that 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 are in place to stop that. Yeah, it's uh, it's very very rigidly structured now. Uh, as in any combat sport, there's a chance of someone dying, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But uh, the way mixed martial arts are structured now, and it's it's a reason that the sport's not so vilified anymore. Uh, they are very, very careful. The referees are becoming more and more qualified, and they are apt to stop a fight much sooner if a fighter gets in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's uh, as the fights pile up, they've had 37 Ultimate Fighting Championships now, and there are many other organizations running fights. They're starting to realize that even though it might look nasty because people are unfamiliar with the sport, it's not that dangerous. I think there have been a total out of uh, the last 10 years of Ultimate Fighting of four deaths, which is four too many, but professional boxing averages four a year. So it, it kind of shows on the safety level. Um, I mean, the, the most, uh, the highest death rate of any sport is from horse racing. Hmm. So ultimate fighting is actually well down the scale, and the way it's being regulated right now is keeping it that way. Okay. And where can people go um, who want to take play, take part? They want to they want to play. They want to fight. Again, Chris Franco. He's a, a mixed style fighter as well as a kickboxing trainer. And I've trained all over the world. I've trained in Japan. I've trained with the ultimate fighting champions. I've trained with shooters in England. And I can say that Chris is the real deal at the Studio West Martial Arts Academy on Fraser Street. Uh, they are in the, in the yellow pages for anybody who wants to contact him. And you want to fight on the ground, you want to fight standing up, Chris is the guy to see. Okay, now locally, are there any things on the scene that people like fights that are sanctioned locally that we can go watch? Or is there anything, is that sort of in the future that might be happening? Uh, yeah, there are always cards coming up. Um, there was recently a card in which a local athlete named Dennis Kang uh, knocked off uh, Dennis Hallman, who was one of the best ultimate fighters in the world. So uh, it's just a matter of keeping your eyes open. Unfortunately, it's kind of under-promoted right now, so you have to keep your eyes on what might be up at your local martial arts store, your local martial arts gym. Okay, websites for Muay Thai or, or No Hold Barred, anything that's uh, huge? Uh, I think the best thing to do would be check out uh, adcombat.com. Okay. It's uh, the Abu Dhabi Combat Club website, but it covers fighting sports all over the world, and that would be pretty comprehensive. Okay, uh, now where would you prefer to fight if you had a choice? I want to get back to Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, my first fight ever was against a huge dude named uh, Ryushi Yanagizawa, <laughs> and he won. And I want to fight. I want a rematch. So oh. he's he's a free agent right now, and I'm working on getting a, a rematch set up either under kickboxing rules or ultimate fighting rules. It doesn't matter. Whatever you get, you're gonna do. Uh, as long as I get him in the ring. <laughs> Okay, and uh, as, as, a, as a result of all your fighting, you also do some stunt work uh, as well? Yes, yeah, I just started doing that in the last couple of years. Um, my ultimate fighting skills and professional wrestling skills kind of got me into that, and it's, uh, I'm having a lot of fun with that, too. I've okay. been working on shows like Andromeda, Stargate, Dark Angel. It's, it's actually been a real blast. Okay, and how do you fit all this in? Because uh, obviously it's a lot of practice, a lot of training. Uh, how do well, you I get a lot of support. I mean, there's a local security company called Asgard Projects Incorporated that's been very, very generous with its support of me. Uh, SciFit Sports Nutrition, 
Body Energy Club, uh, bodybuilding supplement retailers. Those are all companies that have backed me, uh, some of them even before I won the Canadian title. And uh, that's what makes it possible for me to devote a lot of time to training, and it's what's given me time to get into the stunt industry. Excellent. Okay, well, we thank you so much, Paul, for coming out, and the best of luck. What's up, what's up next for you? Um, maybe a fight with Kirk James. He's the number one contender for my title right now, so I'm going to see if I can talk a local promoter into flying him out so I can beat him up. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll look forward to uh, hearing about when that's going to happen. Uh, let's, right now, we're going to go to a shower break, but when we get back, we've got open phones with Kevin and me.